There we go. So uh, my section of the presentation is going to be on um, the entering and the jurying process. And I just basically tried to put this together uh, from questions that people have asked me in the past in my own experience. And by the way, we're going to be recording this and then we're going to be linking it off the website to YouTube as a resource so that down the road, if people are curious or they're wondering, uh, you know, how to correctly present their paintings, they can uh, come in and, and take a look at the videos again, the, the part that's um, necessary for that. Okay. So before you enter, one of the biggest things that we that you have to do is read the call for entries and any associated booklets or PDFs or anything else that might accompany that. So the call for entries, fondly known as the uh, CFE, is um, it basically has everything in it that you're going to need to know uh, before you enter the show. So for example, what's the allowed media? Uh, what about size? Is there a limit on the size? It's a shame to spend your 15 bucks and enter a painting that's three inches too big. So, uh, you know, read those kinds of rules quite carefully. And also, a lot of shows have a theme. And I would say that's more common with um, the FCA shows down at the FCA gallery than chapter shows. Chapter shows don't tend to have a, a theme. They tend to be just whatever you like. But sometimes there is criteria that you have to follow. Um, of course, copyright rules have to be followed. And they should be in every call for entry uh, booklet. But you have to assume that copyright rules are in place. If you are dealing with an FCA show, as opposed to some other organization's show, you also have to be aware of the FCA photo reference rules. And uh, they are in the policy manual in the FCA, and they'll also be in the call for entry booklet. Uh, basically, you have to create a photo uh, painting from your own photo reference or that of a friend or family member, a non-professional artist. Uh, can't use stock imagery or things that are going to end up on Pinterest. And um, also, depending on the show, there may be rules about work that has been shown before. So, for example, the, if the uh, show is the Oasis show and it's being displayed at the Peachland Art Gallery, uh, they have a rule there that you can't display something there that's already been displayed there. So if you had an artwork in the Peachland Art Gallery with a different group, for example, you would not be able to enter that in the Oasis show. And there's also a standard FCA rule that if you have uh, entered the painting in another chapter and it won an award, then it's not eligible anymore for chapter level shows. You can still send it to the Federation Gallery, but um, not for chapter levels. Okay, now the image of your artwork is everything. It's basically all the jurors have to go on. So make sure there's enough pixels. <laughs> there used to be quite a strict limit on the size of the file. Uh, that you could send when you submitted your entry. But that is no longer the case. They can accept very large files. So you're better to err on too many pixels rather than to not have enough. Make sure that your photograph is really clear. If it's blurry, the jury just can't do its job properly. It has to be cropped so that there's no frame or background showing in, in, the, uh, in the image. And it has to be representative of the actual artwork. Every once in a while, we have a painting that shows up to be hung. And uh, you sort of look at the image that was sent in with the entry. And you look at the painting, you go, hmm, <laughs> these don't quite look the same. So make sure that your artwork and the actual uh, image look the same. Now, if you haven't entered FCA shows before, uh, there's a really good tutorial at the FCA website, artist.ca, under the uh, member resources page. And uh, you can go in there and there's a nice uh, tutorial that will walk you right through the whole process. Now, when you are actually submitting your, your painting, uh, there's a form that you have to fill in all these different uh, fields. 
And there's some information that we'd like you to know about that. And a lot of it is about the title cards that we print out to go with the, the uh, artwork on the wall. So we'll put your artwork up and then there's a title card that's beside it. So for example, the title of the artwork, uh, some titles are extremely long. And what happens then is that we have to make them all fit in on the card. So we make the font smaller. So it becomes harder to read. So if you can try to keep your titles from being too lengthy. The same is true when you uh, put in down here, your medium and your substrate. Uh, acrylic on canvas is quite sufficient. You don't have to say acrylic on gallery wrapped canvas and stuff like that. We're basically just looking for, is it paper? Is it canvas? Is it car, uh, uh, cradle panel? Uh, things like that. And again, it creates an issue for the title cards if your artwork is accepted. Uh, size, we always specify height first and then width. Uh, your price, so your price has to include any commission that's being charged. So for example, um, if there's a 35% uh, commission taken by uh, the show on a sale, um, your price is includes that commission. And it also, if you have it framed, obviously it includes frame. Whatever it shows up in at the show, it includes that. Now, by far and away, all of the shows will require that artwork be for sale. Uh, there's very, very few instances of shows where you can submit artwork that is uh, not available for sale or already sold. So be aware of that. If you enter a show um, and your artwork's not for sale, uh, you're just gonna lose your entry fee. Okay. Now, one of the sort of fields that has been added more recently in the last few years is the description field. And uh, I don't know about you, I hate writing descriptions <laughs> for my paintings, but here's what it's about. There are some shows, um, mainly at the FCA, such as the Muse show or concept. These are shows with a theme. So they're expecting a certain kind of a painting. For a conceptualized, a conceptual piece of art, they'll actually require an artist statement. And this is where you would put it, is in the description field. Now the artist statement that, that goes along with that will actually be shown to the jurors in that case, because it's part and parcel of the work uh, for some of those shows. Now for most shows, that's not the case. The jurors will never see the description. The description for most shows is to aid in the sale of uh, the artwork online. So what we're looking for here is not a description of the work so much as a description of why you painted it. That's what people like to know. It gives the, um, the artwork a bit of a story, backstory. And uh, people who are prospectively looking to buy a piece of artwork are really interested in that. So that's what you want to think about when you are putting in the uh, the description in your in your um, entry form. Okay, now you got through the entry process, you got your images uploaded, life is good. Once you've uploaded and you're all finished, then you must finalize your entry. So there's a button you click on to say that you finalized your entry. And you'll be sent an email to confirm that. Now the show committee will be reviewing the, you, the work and making sure it meets the conditions in the call for entries and they will accept it. So this is, they've reviewed it from an administrative perspective and you will be sent an email. Uh, and this is the point where if there's any issues um, with the work, if the image is blurry or it doesn't fit the criteria of the show, there's some kind of an issue, uh, that's when the show committee will contact you and give you an opportunity to fix it, uh, to remedy it, okay? And then they'll go through the acceptance uh, process. Okay, so now once all of the entries are in and the deadline is passed and they've been reviewed, uh, that's when the jurors work begins. So the three jurors that have been uh, selected for the show will receive an email that basically looks just like this. And it gives them the timetable 
for their jurying. Um, and it gives them a bit of information about it. And it basically gives them the all important thing, which is the link. So they go ahead, the juror, jurors individually will go ahead and click on the link and start to look at the actual show. They have to um, basically agree to the jurying process. So they're not going to show bias, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they will go ahead and click on, I understand the above procedure. And then they actually get in to see the entries. And this is what they see. So uh, they'll see the name of the show, uh, the little bit of instructions that they get. Um, and then they'll see the actual thumbnails of the actual images. Now these are randomized. So if you entered say four paintings in a show, they're not going to be in a, in a lump. They're going to be spread out throughout. And they're not in alphabetical order or anything. They just come up totally ram randomized for the jurors. Uh, and the jurors get to go through them and I'll show you that in, in just a moment. And then once they're finally finished and most jurors that I know usually take a day or two to actually do the jurying, they may go back in here two or three times to review and fine tune the scores that they've awarded, et cetera. Some, some shows may only be a uh, hundred or so entries. Um, our record is 336, <laughs> which we had last year for the Oasis show. But I know that down at the FCA gallery, they've had shows there with over 500 entries. So, you know, the jurors have a big job to do um, to actually do that. So what's the jury looking for? They actually do have jury and criteria. <laughs> so the first one is design. Uh, they're looking to see if the design and the composition works. Uh, is there a focal point? Is, is the eye being led around the painting in, in a way that uh, keeps the movement going and doesn't become too static? Um, does it look like it's in balance? So also they'll look at the drawing. And in a representational piece, the drawing must be correct. So if there's any kind of objects or anything else in there, you know, perspective, all those sorts of things, uh, anatomy is a big one, um, need to be correct. There has to be some skill in the level of drawing. They'll look at values. Do the values create an interesting design? And does it have a sense of light that reads correctly? <laughs> you don't want the shadow on one side on one tree and the other side on the other tree. So there has to be a uniform sense of light. Color. Uh, is the color being used skillfully to create an impact? Uh, do we have a balance of neutral versus saturated colors, warm versus cool? Uh, is there a mood that's being implied through the use of the color? Visual impact. So this one is a bit more subjective and this is where some jurors might assign a different score to a painting than other jurors. It's basically does the painting grab and keep your attention or is it maybe just a little boring, something that's been done over and over again. They'll look at the paint application and there is a magnification tool uh, on through, that they can use through this to actually go in and take a look at sections of the painting and see the brushwork, uh, see the impasto if there is any, see if there's a texture, whatever it happens to be. So is the artist demonstrating a command of their medium? Uh, does it show confidence? And last but not least, is it how, what is the concept? Is this something that's been done over and over and over again? Or is this something that's fairly fresh or maybe a new take on something that's been done a lot? Uh, so the concept is also important. So these are the criteria that uh, the juror has in their mind when they are actually looking at all the work. Now, what do the jurors actually see? They're gonna see the title of the painting. It always helps to have a good title. 
That's where my husband comes in because <laughs> I can't tell you, I can't never figure out a good title. They're going to see the size and the medium and the substrate. So sometimes you look at something and you go, hmm, that's quite interesting. And then you look at the size and you think, well, maybe at 30 by 40, it wouldn't be as interesting or something, you know, or maybe they'll say, oh, what a nice piece. And it's only six by eight. So, you know, the size and the uh, medium give them some kind of an idea of the visual impact of a piece. Then depending on the show, um, they may see the description. And that's the choice when uh, in, when chapters or anybody, the, the FCA is setting up a show, they can choose whether the jurors will see the description or not. Most shows at this point are still not displaying uh, the description. So what do the jurors uh, not see? Whoops, I think I hit the wrong button here. There we go. What do the jurors not see? They don't see who the artist is. That's anonymous. They're looking at the artwork and they're not to consider who did the artwork. They also don't see each other's scores. So they have no idea what the other two jurors have assigned score-wise to paintings. This is actually what they see. So up at the top, they'll see the title, the size, and the uh, medium and substrate. Uh, they'll see a, a, an enlarged version of the painting itself, and they'll be able to hold their mouse over anything that they want to zoom in on, and then they can see things in detail. Uh, down here, they've got a seven point scale to assign uh, each individual artwork a score. Four and higher are, is a qualifying score. Um, that it means that that painting is of sufficient quality to be able to get into a show at the FCA gallery. Um, the sixes and sevens are potential award paintings. Those are ones that uh, stand out and they're, they, they're considered um, outstanding and, and eligible for awards. And if it's a chapter show where perhaps we have more space, uh, then uh, the painting that's awarded between threes and fours would also be included in that show, but it would be a non-qualifying work. Now, this, this slide shows you what the show committee sees. So once the jurors have done their job, the show committee goes into the website. Uh, we're going to see a list of the entries. Uh, we're going to see the average scores. So not individual scores of the jurors, but just the total. So you get all these weird fractions. <laughs> so this is where you might have uh, paintings that scored an average of uh, 3.67 or 5.33, it's, uh, you know, that's the score that we'll end up seeing. And this last slide is about the job of the show chair and the, and, the, and the committee. What do they have to do? So the first thing they have to do is they have to fit the show to the physical space. Is there enough room in the venue for 50 paintings or 100 paintings or, 120 or how big is the venue and how many paintings can reasonably be fit in that venue. Then they have to find a cutoff score uh, based on the, the call for entries. So um, at national shows, only paintings that score four or higher a qualifying score are allowed to hang. So that's at the FCA gallery. For chapter shows, we can hang uh, non-qualifying work as well. So we have to find a score that says, okay, we've got uh, the right, we've got a reasonable number of paintings that can be hung in the venue. And this is like the cutoff score for that. Now, depending on the call for entries, they may have to eliminate extras. So it's quite common in the call to entries to say, you can enter a maximum of five paintings but a maximum of two will hang in the venue. So those of course would be the, the higher scoring of your five paintings would be the ones that would be um, able to hang. And uh, if there's an online show attached to the call for entries as there is in Oasis, then the online show usually can accommodate the extras, the ones that um, met the criteria score wise, but maybe didn't get into the physical space. 
Another thing we have to do is we have to determine the qualifying entries. So those are paintings with a score of four or greater that are going to be displayed at the physical show. That's what it takes to be considered a qualifying entry. And the, um, the reason why we have to do that is we have to submit a list of qualifying entries to the FCA. This is for uh, basically the vetting of signature application, signature status applications uh, that happen once a year down at the Federation. People will submit to um, be considered for a signature status. And the rules for that keep changing. So I'm not going to put them uh, up right now in terms of what the current rules are. They, they, they do change them, but it all revolves around having uh, a certain number of qualifying paintings uh, that you've gotten into shows. So it's necessary for you to keep track of your qualifying paintings and which shows they were in. And uh, that way, when you go to apply for signature status down the road, you'll be able to say this painting, this show, this painting, this show. Currently, you need to have seven, seven paintings in seven, seven different paintings in seven different shows to be able to apply for signature status. And of those, two need to be shows that were at the Federation Gallery. But like I say, those rules keep on changing. So that is uh, pretty much it. That is the entry process, what the jurying process looks like, and then uh, what the show committee actually does in terms of uh, what happens prior to you guys receiving your accept decline emails and then the other lists about physical, online, etc.